the Psalms have everything to do with Jesus. The Psalms were the very prayer book that the Lord Jesus Christ used. So he entered into human existence. I would say over the Psalms is a metaphor. It's a metaphor of exile, God's hiddenness and God's absence. So in the first two chapters, we find that the psalmist is optimistic. He believes God is just, God is good, and that when one grows in wisdom, that one will see the victory of God. But in Psalm 3, the very first Psalm of David, we have David saying, how many are my enemies, O God? In other words, there's a surprising element that means that the Psalms really go from a sense of orientation through disorientation, through reorientation. And that has been the human lot for the last couple of thousand years. Christ entered into human existence. So when David is crying out that he wants to see the glory of the Lord, it's Christ crying out that he may see the glory of the Father again. So that in Jesus' life, in his suffering, in his death, we see that he fully ident identifies himself with humanity. So when Psalm 1 begins, then, happy is the man who does not associate with sinners, but who walks according to the Torah of Yahweh, we find that Christ has that commitment, namely that the law is in him and he lives by the instructions of the Father. He is fully obedient to the Father. When the psalmist then say, confessing their sins and speaking about their sins, we find that Christ identified with human sinfulness. Yeah. It is where Christ, God himself, enters into the human condition. And more than that, he takes upon himself the human condition. So every psalm, in a sense, speaks about David and other psalmists. But we find that Christ walked with the psalmist. Now, what is so magnificent is this, that the psalmists are longing for the very presence of God. Uh, for example, let me just read Psalm 27, a couple of verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then he continues in verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Now, that is the human longing. In other words, as Warfield has put it, humans long for the fullness of God, not just a little bit of God, but rather we are created in order to have then a relationship with God, to be entering into a renewed relationship. There it is not just that we have a relationship with creation, but with the creator. And humanity then is, in a sense, even in their disobedience, they are seeking God in, of course, all the wrong places. But what we find is that the psalmists are the ones who are seeking God and directing us to seek God. And what is so magnificent is that Jesus Christ sought the Father. At every point, he turns to the Father. And we find here then a sense of the relationship of the imminent Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that now we are finding out more in the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all involved in the salvation of humans. And so the identification of David with humanity is then anticipating the identification of the Lord Jesus Christ with humanity, with the human condition. And what we have to learn to do is this, to develop a longing for God, a longing to know more about God, a longing for fellowship with him. All too often we talk about salvation. So the psalmist says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom will I be afraid? But if that's not enough for him. In verse 4 he says, one thing I desire, to look upon the beauty of the Lord. And it is in that regard where people, when they get older, they realize as to how vain things are on earth. And they have a greater interest in seeing the beauty of God. 
And that is what I would say is what is helping the Psalms to that every generation has found God in the Psalms. In the early church, the book of Psalms was really the prayer book of the Christians. Pope Leo made it very clear. If you don't know the book of Psalms, you have no business being in ministry. Now, we're not talking about reading the book of Psalms. We're talking about singing the book of Psalms, knowing the book of Psalms, knowing how to go from one Psalm to another. Our Lord again and again showed his ministry in the relationship to the book of Psalms. He knew himself, his own identity, in relationship to human beings because he identified with David and the other authors in the book of Psalms. Dwelling in the Psalms helps us then to find out more who God is. 